All right, dudes, you ready for this? I'm about to show you the best solo farming method on interchange. You can make like easy, easy 750K to a million an hour doing this. These are 15 minute runs and I'm gonna show you my route. Now for you veterans out there, they're like, no, don't show the noobs. I'm sorry, I have to share this. I see a lot of people rolling in uh, crappy armor, silly helmets, funny hats. You guys need some gear, and uh, I do about an hour, two hours of these, and then I can buy as much gear as I need. So this is exactly where we need to be. This is the southeast exit. I'm gonna put a map in the description. Um, two maps to show you the route and the reverse route, depending on what spawn you get. And you just wanna bring Paka, a pistol. Ooh. Yeah. What's he shooting at? Oh, ho, 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 ho. a hatchling. All right, let's pop the scab too. How many times do I have to shoot you in the head? Oh my gosh, the net code, 10 of 10, IGN. Dude, I shot. Oh my, all right, anyways. So you're bringing Paka, you're bringing Comtax, and you're bringing two mags and a rail guard. I think there's another scav, actually. There's another scav spawn at the top. Let me grab the shotgun. I didn't even bring a vest or a backpack just to show you guys that are new. If you can't get Comtax, it's no big deal. If you can't get Paka, it's no big deal. You're not going for PVP. Let's grab this guy's, uh, grab this dude's dog tag sorry bro i don't normally kill hatchlings to be honest when i'm playing solos if i see a hatchling i do the little wiggle and then let him be it's a scab up here so yeah if you can't get paka it's no big deal let's check this first weapons box actually before we go hit up that scab so this is the first one Actually sort this real quick I need the ammo and we didn't grab that backpack from the scav because hopefully this other scav has a better backpack but yeah I like to bring as minimal gear as possible just because that's more stuff that we can take out of the raid maximum return and I didn't bring a tri-zip I didn't bring you know that stuff I highly recommend you do but just for the purposes of this video I didn't want to bring a tri-zip just to show you how much you can get Coming in with no backpack, no vest. It's all profit. Where is the scav at? I know there's a second scav spawn. But yeah, this is exactly where we need to be, right here. That that entrance, remember that entrance. Oh, I see him. He's camping the body, dude. What a cheeky scav. He's literally camping the body. Yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Does he have a backpack? No, he doesn't. And he's got a crappy gun, too. This guy's not going to have anything we need. All right, let's grab this guy's backpack. And then we're going to start this loot run. We're already, we're already taking uh, too long on this. Can I hear somebody? No. Let me search this up. We're taking too long on this. Most of the time you want to just run in here, but we had to deal with this player and these scavs. Get rid of the MRE. All right, let's go. So I brought the Kiba keys too to the gun store. For those of you who haven't seen the gun store loot, I want to show you guys that. I don't know if it's worth it. I found a couple Reaper IRs, which is the infrared uh, optics, but other than that, it's been kind of gimp, to be honest. So here's the second weapon crate.
Oh yeah, I brought a AK mag and an AK uh, or a 7.62 mag as well. Another shotgun. All right, it's better than nothing. So I bought a 7.62 mag filled with ammo and I brought an AK mag filled with ammo because there's a really, really high chance that we're going to get an AK before we leave this place. Whether a short uh, or a long one. There's an optic, nice. And there it is, right there. All right, perfect. So let's put this on here. That's another reason I bring the handguard is so you can stick foregrips and lasers and lights on top of them. Uh, yeah, all right. Get rid of that key and bandage later. Anything fantastic? No, painkillers, we'll grab them. Always need painkillers. Amount of times I get shot, man. So that was the second, no, that was the third weapons crate. You jump up on the barrels right here. Little trick to this is you gotta back up and then back up and then jump forward like that. This is the third weapon crate. Come on, big money, AS Val. Ooh, I'll take that. I can buy these, but I like the MP5. This fits on a Sega. We'll grab that in case we find another Sega. I'm gonna leave the AS Val mags. I can buy those as well. I'm looking for rare mods and high, uh, expensive, expensive mods. Take this stock. Stock's worth about 4K. Another part of this is having like the knowledge, like knowing which ones are the best to take, which mods are worth grabbing. And this is the grenade box. A lot of grenades in here. And here's a ammo box over here. Just see some mags on the ground. Sometimes there's mods, so just pay attention. You'll see like optics or something. I'm looking for BT ammo. Nothing, no ammo. All right, no worries. Switch to the AK, full auto. And then this, these walls right here, left and right wall. Um, ton of things that you need for trade in, like pliers and tape and all sorts of random stuff. There's also a bunch of toolboxes. I'm just gonna skip them though. We're just going for the, the high value stuff. Plus, who, who wants to have all those things in their inventory? It's so annoying when you have half your inventories filled with quest items. Here's another weapons crate in the back of the van. Nothing in this one, all right. And then there's another weapons crate right here. I don't know what we're up to, six, seven, eight, something like that. And this is without any keys either. And then the top of the tables here by this like checkpoint thing uh, have mods. Sometimes you'll see helmets right there. Um, just random, just stuff, tons of random stuff, different weapons, mods, ammo, all sorts of stuff. Here's another weapons crate. I think there's a gun in here. It takes longer when there's a gun. Yep. Uh, let's ditch this. Full mag, and this is exactly why I bring extra ammo too. See, now if we see someone who's geared, there's a high chance that uh, we can actually defend ourselves pretty easily. With zero risk on our end. We risked a pistol, packa, and some contacts. And then you want to cut over into this tent area because this is this is where the Kiba ones you uh, Kiba one key spawns. Let me show you. It's right here, which is not here. 
And then inside the tents, you'll find rollers, gold chains, clocks, figurines, all sorts of stuff. But you need two Kiba keys to get into the gun store we're about to get into. One's from a task, a level 11. And the other one is... You gotta find it or buy it. I bought it off the Trader Discord. Shout out to the people on the Trader Discord, by the way. You guys are awesome. All the trades, all the legit traders. I think there's like 8,000 people on the Discord and only 60 people have been banned. So it's super useful if you're looking for quest items and rare mods and cool stuff. And oh, I hear, uh, and then check the top of these mannequins for cowboy hats and stuff. You guys need that for a quest or task. We're going to check the pharmacy. Um, you guys probably don't have the key yet for this. But it, there's only weapon one weapons crate in there. Let's check it. Or a rare items crate, I should say. There's also like possible Geiger counter spawns and whatever. I just want to check this one real quick. Six round mag. Which I can buy those now too. Optic and a AK74U. Alright, so let's do this. We need the optic for sure. I'm gonna ditch this mag. And fold this up. Yeah, it should fit in there. Now again, if I would have brought a tri-zip, this is just assuming you guys don't have a tri-zip. Um we can grab all this stuff. We can grab all the loots, baby. If I would have brought my trailer hitch to my SUV, we'd have everything. And just remember to try to put mods on top of mods, even if you don't think they'll work, you never know. Like putting the 60 rounder in the AK, just save space, maximize, uh, maximize space. All right, we're gonna check this building right here. It's right across from Mantis. Mantis has a ton of meds too. This building has a weapons crate and a couple coats. And this is pretty much the route I take every time too, by the way. If I don't take this, I take the reverse. Okay, see, now we're full. We're like, we don't have any room really. I'm gonna dump my TT because I'll get it back in insurance. And I know like some people like to just go on a rampage killing. Like I don't, I don't farm loot. I just kill people for it. You know, that's cool for me as a solo player. This is fun. Zero, like literally almost zero risk on these. Well, there's a little bit like ten, fifty thousand dollars risk, but your return is just so high. You know, 200,000 ruples per run is insane, man. 15 minute runs. <laughs> that. that was not good. Just save some of that ammo. Ah! Please, no. Get a little bite of that, baby. Oh, that's not what I'm going to throw. Let's check and see what he's got. Just an AK. Nothing fantastic. We got to take care of this other scab. He patrols right in front of the gun store. All right. Uh, throw a little distraction. Scare anybody in the area. That might have got him, actually. I don't hear him. Oh, no, he's still up. I don't hear him talking that smack no more, I was going to say, but he's still up. All right. Keep a gun store. Is it worth it? Uh, I don't know, guys. I paid a lot for my key. And, uh, as you can see, um, oh, here's the suppressor. I don't know if it's worth it, to be honest. The, I hear somebody to the right. The spawns behind this building have more weapons crates than the actual Kiba gun store. But I think there's more rarer stuff in here. I feel like for the amount of work I had to do to get task one done or task 11 done, I don't know if it's worth it, dudes. Someone that was running with us the other day found a DVL in here, but that was after like probably 25 runs. Sometimes on the wall here, you'll see like a tricked out shotgun or a PP, but I mean, they sell for like 40, 60,000. 
you know, you find rare like stuff like that, but I don't know if it's worth it, to be honest. You might be better off skipping um, skipping this and just hitting the weapons crates where the uh, scav is lurking back there. Sometimes there's stuff in here, but this is, I mean, you guys can see. I heard this place used to be awesome, but I also heard that it used to be a bug how people got in. Like it wasn't, people weren't even meant to get in and there was like sniper rifles everywhere. It seems a little overpowered. PSO. So I mean, as you guys can see, it's it's okay. It's not it's nothing like I don't know. I was kind of disappointed to be honest when I got the second key. Let's grab this too. Let me drop my TT mag cuz I'll get that back in insurance. And then sometimes like look at the mannequins, there's if you do end up grinding these keys, there'll be a helmet on one of the mannequins, never seen armor. And then like there's mags and nothing too incredible to be honest. Let's check this case one more time. I think I missed something. Yeah, that's an optic. Let's grab that. So like I said, if you can't get in here, which I'm assuming a large majority of you can't, it's you're not you're not really missing anything anyways. The back of this place is better. We're gonna skip it because I'm completely full of loot. Um we're not even gonna loot the other scavs we killed. We're just gonna dip. There's one more crate I wanna show you on the way out. I'm gonna throw a distraction. And then you're gonna push down the ramp and then you're gonna hook right. There's one more weapons box on the way out. What are we at? 42 minutes. So we spent about 18 minutes in here. I kind of jerked around in the gun store. You can get these down to 13 minute runs though. We're going to hit this weapons box. And this is the last one. Now, if you're running the reverse run of this, you're coming in this way and this is the first thing you're hitting. And then you're hitting the back of the Kiba gun store and then making your way through the grocery store towards the back and then exiting that way. And this is what I found to be like the highest, the fastest route, the highest return, and the, like most amount of money on your return. I guess you could do this full geared, but kind of defeats the purpose. You get wrecked in Paca and a pistol. You're not really, oh, check this by the way. There's a task you need to do and people have to, they have to sit on this trash heap. It's for Ragman. It's a, you gotta bring two gazelle and drop it there, but they have to sit there for like two minutes. Kind of like the opening clip. The guy was on the quest when I killed him. You didn't hear me sneak up on him. So you always want to check that spot. And that's it. That's a good return. I think we'll probably make like about 150 to 200 off that, which I don't think is too bad. Um, but again, I didn't bring a tri zip or a scav backpack just to show guys who maybe the only thing they can buy so far in the game is a pistol or something. So you do a couple hours of this and then you're ready to run, uh, customs and full armor and fully mounted weapons all day for the rest of the day. So I hope this helps some of you guys. If it did help some of you, if you learned something new from this video, I'd appreciate it if you liked it and let's get in today's sermon. So I ended up making 183,000 for 15 minutes. That's not bad. Now, again, though, I just want to emphasize, bring a backpack if you can, bring the biggest backpack you can. If you lose it, it's worth it getting another one because you're going to make so much more. And another thing too, is you can, when you skip the gun store, it's actually a faster route and you'll shave, you'll get it down to like 12, 13 minutes. And uh, so let's get into some scripture. Now, what I love to do at the end of my videos, if you're new to the channel, I'd love to share God's message. That's it. I'm not trying to save your soul. I'm not trying to get you to go to church. Uh, if you read the Bible after hearing uh, my video, awesome. If you don't, 
It's no skin off my back. I just love sharing God's message. He's done so many wonderful things for me in my life, my family. My experience here has been uh, just miracle after miracle of God's work in my life and other people's life. And I just love sharing his message. And I hope you stick around to hear it. If you don't, it's all good. I get it. It's the internet. It's a YouTube gaming video, but this is just something I love to do. So Today's message is going to be from the book of Jeremiah. We've read this before, I believe. If not, I, we're missing out on the great scripture. So let's get right into it. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, I, I talk about God's plan a lot on this channel and how sometimes our plans and God pl God's plans go together, but a lot of times God has so much better for you, and unfortunately, when God has better for you, unfortunately, momentarily, for a short time, you will have to suffer, and... But see, the, the greatest part about that is God's plans are always better than our plans because he, I mean, you know, he's God. It's like omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful creator, designer, master designer. He's going to have plans that are way better than our silly little plans. And there's been so many opportunities in my life, guys, that where I didn't get it. I didn't get it. We didn't get the house we wanted to get. We, I didn't get the job I wanted to get. I didn't get where I wanted to get. But it was because God had a bigger opportunity for me and God had something even better for me. And I just want to encourage you if you're listening to this today and maybe it feels like you're, go you're struggling, obstacle, failure, that failure and that obstacle and that struggle and whatever it is you're going through is preparing you for something greater and glory to God for like glory to God for his plans because honestly, my plans are crap dude like every plan that I try to make without including God it's just it it falls apart it really does fall apart and God I I feel like sometimes God will give you things that you want even though they're not a part of his well I mean technically it is still a part of his plans but he'll give you things that you want just to show you like that's not that's not the that's not really what I have in store for you. I have something better. So here, take, you know, take this, uh, take this hamburger when I'm still cooking this steak on this barbecue for you. You know, eat this, eat this crappy hamburger and you realize that you're still hungry, but I have this delicious, maybe I need to get some lunch. <laughs> but honestly, God's plans are just incredible guys. And I just want to encourage you, if it feels like you're going through a struggle, an obstacle, a failure, there are greater plans in store for you. This says prosper you, by the way, if you, I want you to keep that in mind. He's going to prosper you, not to harm you. God's plans are, are to prosper you, to grow you in prosperity, not spiritually, not only spiritually, but emotionally, mentally, and it's just, it's an incredible, incredible passage. I love this passage. Don't forget it. God's truth is a rock. And I hope that rock is in your life and you are, you stand firm on it because nothing, nothing will, will destroy that rock in your life. It is, it is the unmovable object. And I just, I hope this helps some of you today and have a wonderful rest of your day, guys. And I will see you in the next episode. Peace and God bless.